I have always said that there are only three power tools that I just do not want to deal without with the way I would work. One's a lathe, two's a thickness planer, and three is a bandsaw. And if I had to limit myself to just one of those, it would most definitely be my love affair with a bandsaw. But I understand why so many people are somewhat intimidated by it, because setting up a bandsaw blade or replacing them can be a hassle and confusing if you're not familiar with a few tricks. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to show you how I swap out a bandsaw blade. Now first things first, uh, if you're dealing with a bandsaw bathe and you haven't worked up really hard, hard calluses and stuff like that, you might want to grab some gloves. And folding a bandsaw blade confuses a lot of people. Uh, there are a lot of different ways to do it, but my way is I will simply reverse my hands, kind of like this right here, and then just give it a twist. And it will fold up very easily and you can do the same thing to unfold it. Just like that. A quick reverse your hands and give it a twist. There you go. Okay? So, now let's come over the bandsaw and let me show you where I'm at. Okay, I have a standard 14 inch jet style blade, uh, bandsaw. It's got a riser block on it, so I've got a little bit more clearance right here. But other than that, it's very similar to everything that they've been making since the 30s. All these iron kind of C-frame C styles are all pretty much the same in some way. Now, I use these roller things, and I keep one of these T-handles on a magnet over behind this door over here. And if I am not putting on the same style blade, like right now I'm just replacing a blade that broke on me, well, I don't really need to change all these adjusters. I would just put the new blade on, readjust it on the wheel, and have at it. But since uh, this is showing you two, what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen everything, top and bottom. Now, a lot of what I'm going to be showing you today is not original. I mean, people like Alex Snodgrass and other people do a very similar technique. Now, Alex Snodgrass uh, probably is the most well-known out there for setting up bandsaws. He advocates taking off this right here because there's basically only two adjustments on those, what you call them, gantries or something underneath there. Take those two hand screws out. They're on giant hand wheels. Pop it off and makes adjusting the bottoms and the top a lot easier. But he's a lot stronger than me, and I'm a bit of a wimp, and this is heavy, so I don't want to deal with it. I don't mind just adjusting down here. When you are adjusting the bottoms right here, it's nice to have this little plastic thing out, because I can actually see the adjusters right through the hole. So I don't really think it's necessary to take this off. But if you want to, go for it. I also use a Carter Quick Release. It makes changing blades a lot easier. Uh, but if you don't have one, something like this, which just adjusts the a tension up from mid uh, tension to full tension and back. You can see this working up and down. You can do this adjustment with the wheel up top. It's a blade tensioning adjustment is all it is. Now step number one is making sure your blade is right side out. You can actually inverse these by with a twist to get them running inside out. If they do, just kind of go right through and they'll pop out. But you want the teeth cutting on the downstroke on this side if that wasn't obvious to you. And if you choose not to remove this off, getting the blade on the wheels, the first step is to kind of weed it through the obstacle course. You've got guards down here. You've got to weed it through on your shades right here. And I like to put it on the bottom wheel first. Get it into the guides on all four sides around here. And sometimes it's easier if you lower this down because I have a little clip right there. Get it through all your guides. Onto the rear wheel. And then I kind of roll it around. And it looks like they might have cut this one an inch short. So I've got to come over here and lower this top wheel quite a bit. Now I get all my blades at a parts place in Austin that kind of services the, the professional industry. And they basically buy bandsaw blades by, you know, a hundred foot roll or something like that and cut it to length. 
which means that occasionally, you know, that teenager behind the office might measure it off a little bit. But I've now got it on both wheels, but there's a chance if I roll it right now, it'll pop off. Because I actually have to adjust this top wheel to keep it centered on both wheels. So if you notice, I have a wheel. It's kind of right in the center of the top wheel over there. And the more I twist it, the angle of the wheel goes in and out. It kind of adjusts back and forth. And this camber uh, keeps, allows you to control where on the wheel the blade rides. So what happens is I will sit here and I will rotate the wheel on this side, adjusting it on this side in order to control how far towards the center I want the blade to ride. And personally, I like my blades to ride where the gullet of the teeth is on the crown of the wheel. These wheels, these rubber wheels or neoprene wheels or poly wheels have a crown to them and I want the teeth on the cent the gullet on the center and the teeth just barely holding over on the side. So that now that I've got it roughly centered, I know it's not gonna fall off, I'll add some tension. And I'll set my tension and basically how you do that one is you have all your wheels fully away and I will come over here and I will press this. Now the idea is that with just a slight amount of pressure, you're only going to move about a quarter of an inch, which means I have the tension way low on this one because it's very easy to push it back and forth. So I come up to that top wheel on the top and I start tightening it up. And I do that one until my method is I will push it and if my finger, with just enough pressure that it turns my fingernail a little white. Now, I have heard a theory that most bandsaw blades, you want to run very loose, but not so much that they flutter in use. So a lot, what a lot of people would do is they'll turn their bandsaw on and use the tensioning and loosen it until they see it fluttered and then tighten it up a little bit. I don't do that method. Other people will pay attention to some kind of scale. I have a scale right here that tells me I should put a lot more tension on because I've got a half inch blade on it. I've just never really trusted them. It seems like somebody could, it could get messed up quite easy that way. So I just do it based off of the real tension of the blade. It just seems more accurate that way to me. Once you've got the tension right the way you want, slowly spin your wheel. A lot of times the alignment might change up a little bit but once again, check it. Now the reason why you want this in the center is because if you have a bandsaw blade and it is riding on the center of the crown, it can flex on both sides. And that's a one major cause of what they call drift. Because if the teeth are bent to a point where it wants to curve one way, well that's the way the saw is going to cut. But if you were to place that, uh, just the gullets of the teeth on the center, the back of the bandsaw blade can flex and follow wherever the kerf goes. So it's an easy way to eliminate a major source of bandsaw drift. Just allow the t crown to be uh, on the center of the wheel and that will let the back of it go wherever it needs to go without harding where the cut goes. I always start with the back guide. It, it, it to me is the most important. And I will move it up just to the point where it is almost touching the blade. The idea is that whenever you put pressure on the blade, you want to flex back maybe a half a millimeter or, or the size of a uh, business card, and then it touches the bearing. Uh, that little bit of tension really does improve the accuracy of your cuts. So if I come over here, I will tighten, come up and tighten up. Now I will say this, these adjusters with these wheels are a pain in the butt. If you can get a toolless adjuster, get it. But if I get it adjusted just right, I can spin it, and you can see it doesn't touch it as it's going around. And I have maybe a business card width right in there. I'll then do the same thing to the back thruster on the bottom. It's the same adjustment. For the sides, I will loosen them up. And they have these little pinch bolts right here that make it a lot easier to move back and forth. I'll actually move it forward until it touches the blade and then I'll just back it off a little bit by just pinching my fingers and letting the fat of my fingers move it back a little bit. 
So once again, I will have a business card's width in between there. Now on this side, I can't even see what I'm doing, but if I do the same thing, I could feel when it touches right there. So I just back it off a little bit and tighten it up, and it should be pretty close. That one's touching, so back it off and just kind of a squeeze of my finger with my fingernail against the plastic. It's just kind of a little micro adjustment using the fat of your fingers. Another excuse to eat pizza. There we go. And this one's a little bit too far off after I eyeballed it. So I'll move it forward again, touch it, and come back. I will tell you this, if you have one of these adjusters up and down, you need to make sure it's really tight before you do this adjustment because if it's a little bit loose, I can offset the whole thing. Then do the same thing on the bottom one. It's the exact same procedure. And once again, I adjust mine simply by looking through the hole. Just find it easy that way. I also find this is a good time just to dab a little bit of oil wherever you think it might be needed. From there, it's a matter of reattaching the safety gear, closing the doors, and getting back to work. Uh -oh. Since today's tip was all about power tools and power outages, I thought we'd do an about face for the bonus and talk about uh, Dick Prinnick. I think that's how you pronounce his last name. He was a documentary guy that went out into the Alaskan wilderness with just the tools he had in a small backpack and he had a 16 millimeter uh, film camera and he spent the next 10 years filming his life surviving the Alaska wilderness with just those basic things. Uh, and then about 10 years, uh, 20 years later in his mid 70s they went out and did a documentary on him again. It's a really cool documentary series. And if you want just a taste of it, uh, the guy that did all the editing and writing for uh, all these little film clips that this guy sent in, uh, Bob Swearer, well, he has a YouTube channel, Swearer Bob, where he's giving you a teaser, a little 10 minute intro of all these little episodes. Really cool. I'll put a link down below. Go check it out. It's one of my favorite things to visit every few months if I just need a little 10 minute brain break. It's called Alone, Alone in the Wilderness.